You want to know how you can get your sprites to go from this to this? Ah, nice and sorted. Let's get straight into it. There are actually two methods to order your sprites. One is the painter's algorithm, which I'm going to showcase in this video. The second one is using ZBuffering, and that requires using OpenGL and having better knowledge of the graphics card. That is the more modern method, but this one is a really simple method and it's nice and it just works for this occasion. The algorithm is incredibly simple. It is just sorting the polygons by the depth and its efficiency is really dependent on your sorting algorithm. So here, O, N log N plus M times N. So N is the amount of sprites you have to order. I'm going to be writing this in Python and that's because Python is just very easy to understand and it's very easy to represent the code and I'll also be using Graylib as its framework to show you the rendering. So I just have this simple project set up for now which just simply has a player, object with the source, a rectangle, a camera which just follows the player and some basic key inputs that so when the player can move the arrow keys and then it just follows it and then so far I just have a rectangle, a blue rectangle that is at position 0 with a width and height of 32 pixels and I have the player and then I have the rectangle that's at x32. So now when I run this with Python, okay, so here's our scene and I as you can see I can move the player and we can move about. Now you see with the blue square, I can be in front of it, but with the white square, I is behind it. So first here we'll just go over how the rendering works. And well it's really simple. It just goes through it in the linear fashion. So it goes from top to bottom. Top is the background and then it'll be overwritten by what's underneath it. In this case, we have the draw rectangle blue fur at the bot first. So that means it's going to be first thing that renders. And then it's the player. And so if the player's X and Y position are on top or the world the same as the blue, it's going to overwrite it. So it's going to be above it. And then we're rendering the white cube last. But even if the player moves underneath it, because it's being rendered before the white cube, it's going to get over rendered, overwritten, I should say. So the fix for this is as we saw we need to order our sprites so that they are rendered by their depth so in this case the y-axis because we're dealing with a 2d game and if we're looking at an orthographic view like in stardew valley the y is its depth so the top of our screen is our furthest away sprites and our bottom of the screen is the sprites that are the closest to us and so they should be rendered last they have the illusion of it being depth so that stuff appears behind it so i've just slightly updated the script and now i have an, an array for sprites and this is an object containing its type of a an example and then its rectangle and then its color it's going to be okay, obviously with the player still and now we create that array so you want to add the player to an array so they're all in one array the reason that we want it to be separate is so we can still manipulate the player's movement if it was an array and it constantly got sorted, it's basically impossible to manipulate the player's values. We'd have to always loop through the check the array where it is in the where the player is in the array, and that is time complex because it'll iterate through each one trying to find the player. Oh, found it, and then we update the values. Not the most efficient or effective way, really. And for now, I'm going to use a simple solution, which is using Python's inbuilt sorted algorithm but i'll go over how you would want to implement your own algorithm and so we use 4y in the sorted array and in this case uh for this specific scenario we're using lambda so this is just telling us what we want to sort it by in this array this is just for python specific obviously we want to sort it by a rectangle's y position and then we simply get the index and we redraw it so now when we run this we should have a nice sorted out sorted right and that will appear in front and behind it let's give it a run and here we are as you can see buzz the player on the front of it far enough boom now it's based on its y exact position so that will be in the center so if i go close this and i show you my code the this is the offset so the center of the sprite if i set this to zero zero you should notice that the camera will also appear in a different spot so the player won't appear center you can see it's appearing at the, the, the point like the top left corner that's zero zero but the offset is just in the center so now when we do it as you see it changes the way it orders so let's take this to the next level let's make it a more realistic example by just generating a bunch of random rectangles in a certain area so in this case generating a hundred rectangles 
from 0 to pixel 19 and we also use the unique pairs which is a random so it will go through and check if this position has not been taken then generate it if it has and retry and so 100 which is quite a fair few amount of sprites and we also just choose a random color so uh what i'm doing is telling sprites generate a random set of array so let's run it shall we and see how it looks okay here's our set and you see the random points and when i get my player to move behind it you see here boom 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 nice and the frame rate is still nice and stable 60 for me on this might not appear 60 on youtube but it is so how taxing is it on the performance well i have system monitor open it's just at about 0.10 to 20 percent of the cpu which is absolutely nothing but that entirely depends on the type of cpu you're using if in this case i have quite a beefy one so it's it's obviously going to do this easily and the data set is actually quite small so it actually has no problem sorting them very quickly as there's not many elements in the array if you're dealing with a thousand elements of an array you're going to probably see a big performance dip especially on lower end hardwares and that's you might want to then start looking at z buffering if you really need to and you only need this sorting for your orthographic look viewing games if your game is purely top down you don't need to and you'll save on performance now for whatever reason your language doesn't have any good sorting algorithms or there's no packages available for it then you're gonna have to implement your own and well geeks for geeks have got you covered as they have a nice selection of very very good sorting algorithms and one of the better ones is heaps of and it just gives you it well it explains it and if you scroll down you can see here the code and i have implemented it in the example to show you how it does so you can see here i've made a new class a new package called sorting and here we put our sports in and we use heap sport and we just loop through it the same way and in our little package it's here and all i've had to do really is just this time specify where i want to sort so it is this one direct.y and the can't the code is pretty much the same as from geeks of geeks i recommend that you just copy them and reference them if if required because what may end up having is you're going to make an inferior version just use what is recommended out there already predefined if you can use a package just to give you an idea hyphen hyphens sorted in built one is actually going to be much is actually going to be better than the heap sort that i have here and it uses a new power sort which is available from 3.11 and above which is a very efficient sorting algorithm better than the heap sort heap sort's still very good and you'll probably gain a point something percent difference uh if you are using python before 3.11 it is trim sort which is again a very good sorting algorithm and these will all have been available to read on geeks for geeks i believe c and c plus plus use a type of quick sort a more old one so you may actually want to see it for a package where it has an even more efficient one or you can again implement them yourself tim sort i believe it's tim sort is on geeks for geeks so you can take the code from there and implement it for your own use in your own game uh, so let's just run it uh, with the new heap sort and we'll do it like that and you see the place here and we're still appearing in front of them as expected which is nice basically the same result you just may see a hit in your cp performance depending on whatever sorting algorithm you want and you need to decide which is the most efficient for you oddly enough insertion sort may actually be the best one to use depending on how you set up your sprites insertion short simply just goes through one by one so it goes in a linear fashion as seen here and usually this is a very slow algorithm because you're just going through one by one by one by one but it's really good if the uh, if this array is already sorted and so if you're generating your sprites in essentially an already sorted way you can use this and it'll be actually be much faster than stuff like heap sort and even power sort because it's just going might only have to move one ray which is the player now this entirely depends on your situation if you have a lot of moving sprites that are constantly changing position then go for a more heap sort like algorithm or power sort and if you're just having the array jumbled every time there's no point using a surgeon short so in my case if we go back to the code i am just 
randomly generating a position on the map the rays aren't being generated sorted a better approach would be for example is to generate them every y axis so choose a position on this random y uh not random y on the x then move on to the next y and generate on there next one next one next one and so the array of these sprites will already be ordered and that means i'd actually only ever have to order the player because none of these sprites are moving now if they were moving i go for a more generic heap sort or the inbuilt power sorting package used by python and you've got to be careful with trying not to overthink this because what ends up happening you can actually be making a more inefficient approach or gaining literally zero benefits so now when we generate our sprites i've changed it so it does it in a double for loop so this time we're going through the y and then the x in fact we can have the x like this we're just uh essentially looping through really the width of our level and we're just simply choosing a random position within that uh, so we want 10 items per x so let's say the world is a height of 20 we want to we want 10 items or sprites every level we then just generate them 19 different times sorry we choose a position within the width so i'm set this 19 and randomly and then we do the same thing we check if it's a unique pair and then we return it and the difference with this is that essentially we've generated a sorted array already meaning that we'll probably get very fast speeds on using an insertion short because currently at this rate if the only object that's going to be moving is the player meaning that the player is the only item that's going to be sorted and you're going to get a really fast uh, sorting speed on that now for using real slot sprites it's uh, really the same thing that i'm just simply doing in that i'm actually generating a purling noise in the back so if i go into this class called the background a different file directory i am actually just generating a seed map and then i also have the same essentially the same thing as the rectangles but this time i'm just specifying the source and so where i should be looking in the texture so here it is the conifers texture this is an open source well a, a public one available on open game art i'll link that in the description along with its terrain i'm using here where i'm just selecting a value in the background so i just generate this map and then i go back into the main it'll tell me which one you know i choose three grass types on the uh, noise map and i'm actually just doing the same thing so you just want to do the same thing as with the cube so if i now run this this is the result as we can see that i get a world with a perlin noise like background and i've got these trees that are randomly generating and uh, not in the in about the ordered sprites so the sprites are being randomized each time and yeah, they're just being so they generate randomly and then they get all put into the same way then they get sorted and then it keeps doing that over and over again and this is the kind of result you get the performance is obviously okay it's actually great it's actually fine and in in a game like this with a Stardew Valley like graphics and where there's not many entities on screen this is completely um, a suitable solution to it you don't need to worry about the using Z buffers I wouldn't say there's a lot of entities on your screen and a lot of moving objects you may do want to look at using the Z buffer otherwise some CPUs may really struggle so the old ones with a low clock and very little cores you may have to find ways of multi-threading your system or multi-processing parts of it you really want to maximize performance without it dropping below 30 F 60 fps even on lower end hardware uh which can be if it, it difficult to gauge if you have a good hardware uh, a high clock speed and you've got this nice it's all running fine on your end but perhaps on someone who's running maybe even an old dual core slow processor then that they may have no chance but they perhaps are one in a thousand one in a thousand or one in ten thousand not many people running those kind of systems anymore it's always nice to build a piece of software that a game that is available and runs on many different platforms rather than just a certain few there is actually another version which is the reverse painter's algorithm and this is can be very efficient because you go from the front so you you or render it from what's in front first and then anything that's behind it you ignore it and it would look like something like this but in our case it just doesn't really work because again the way sprites are rendered is their ordering so the further the further the third thing that was rendered first is is going to be at the back and because we're going through and re rendering them in that order it's going to have the like reverse effect you can, i have it rendering in reverse and you can expect we get the reverse effect where if we walk in front of it we get the trees are now in front of us rather than behind us 
we can see that uh, the benefit of having this is we because we only have to render things that are we, we we know that what this needs to be rendered on top meaning we can ignore the thing that can be rendered behind us and that it, it ignores some overhead on the CPU which is is quite which is quite nice uh, the only thing that you it, you want to keep is the translucency so you can see that this tree has a bit of translucency underneath it so when the player walks be there and also on the grass you can see the translucency which adds a really nice effect the normal method of just sorting and going through is probably the best scenario i can't think of a way that we can use the reverse but that it does exist just to let you know so comment down below if you have any questions or any other solutions that you know of or implement it or what implementation you use to render your sprites to user z before you were traditional painters algorithm that's it and i'll see you in the next one